Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so first off, you know, I hope you've noticed the new uh, channel artwork that I'm starting to get up. Uh, I, my Fiverr artist came back and he had some an awesome icon for me. Uh, so I'm going to be working on getting even more of that up in the next week or so. Secondly, I'm going for a newer, shorter format. Hopefully I can keep these things like under six or seven minutes because I'm starting to realize 15 minutes of me rambling is just not cool and not fun and no one likes that. I want to talk for a second and contradict myself and talk for a few minutes about what's in a name. Uh, so the name Bone String Slaughterhouse is something that I specifically picked for two reasons. As a new violinist, I understand that I'm often making horrible, horrible noises when I play, and it just takes time to ma master basic skills to get to the point where you actually sound good. So number two is, uh, I, you know, I want to be a little bit different. I enjoy different styles of music. I'm not really, I, I listen to some classical, but I'm not a huge fan. And uh, most people who play violin play for classical music. It's the classic music style of music to play on this instrument. Um, but my inspirations are people like Lindsey Sterling, Taylor Davis, Josh Savetti, you know, other people who play more pop or you know modern music. Um, so anyway, that's what's with the uh, the name Bone String Slaughterhouse, and uh, yeah. All right. So for practice this week, I focused mainly on scales. Uh, and not just doing scales uh, the way that I had been doing them, but actually trying to do new things while I'm doing scales. So nine times out of ten when I would play scales, well, ten times out of ten previously, I would be doing one note per bow stroke. So that is what you saw me do before, it's the simple... And... What I was realizing after about three weeks of doing those nonstop is that it wasn't really helping me anymore. Um, it was helping me improve my intonation just a little bit, but it wasn't actually helping me improve anything else. I was still was having trouble with bow technique. Um, my hand felt like it had lead in it and I couldn't do notes fast enough. So what I started doing was multiple notes per bow stroke. And what I found is that this greatly improved my skill pretty quickly. Uh, so what that looks like is um, instead of just doing one note, I would try and do several, uh, you know, two notes, four notes, eight notes per bow stroke. Um, so here's an example of eight notes per bow stroke. I lied, that's four. And eight. And what I found this did, it did two things for me. One, it did help me get some of that bow control. Uh, I am smoother and more even with my bow strokes. I have a more even tone throughout. I also can take better advantage of the full length of the bow. Uh, the second thing is that it helped me move my fingers a little bit faster. You know, to actually get all eight notes in one bow stroke, I had to go pretty fast. So that was the main thing that I focused on this week while I was practicing were those uh, multiple note per bow stroke scales and hopefully I can you know as I expand the things I'm practicing on work on getting past first position and moving further up the neck of the violin uh, I can you know uh, start working on doing those you know with their octave scales going up one string uh, using the same technique that'll really help when I'm shifting from first to third or vice versa so scales 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 the second thing that I did this week is I uh, took a song that I really enjoy and uh, tried to figure out how to play it for myself. Uh, Atlas by Faux Tales is a kind of dubstep electronica EDM song that has a really nice simple melody that's played throughout it. And uh, the artist is actually kind enough to put up a video that shows how he plays this on a keyboard. Uh, so I took this video, I took a picture of a keyboard, and then uh, I got the whole thing written out in note flight. And uh, when I took the exact copy of what he was playing in note flight and tried to figure out how would I massage this so that I could play it easily on the violin because I can't exactly play two octaves of the same note at one time. Um, so what I did is I dropped the whole thing down on an octave and played the lower octave because that was much easier for me. I'm more comfortable on the D and the A strings and not playing, you know, past first position on the E string. So, um, yeah, did that. Here, I'll uh, play one quick bar of it for you right now. 
Here we go. Yeah, maybe I won't. Oh, uh, wait. Try again. So I also, you know, I went through and I played the whole thing along to Fotel's video, uh, uh, to his music, and recorded it for you. Uh, you know, you can check that out here if you want to, and uh, take a look, see what you think. Uh, I think the song sounds great with violin. Uh, frankly, it would sound better with someone better at the violin than me. Um, so yeah, that was uh, one of the fun little things that I did this week to help me practice my music theory and also get me playing different music. All right, guys, that's all for this week. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that and enjoy the shorter format. Uh, as well, you know, go ahead and leave me some comments below. Let me know what you think. Uh, also, uh, if you enjoy this and you want to come back for more, then God bless your soul and click to subscribe below. See you next week.